Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my director spotlight on Kihachi Okamoto, a man who began his directing career in the late 1950s and continued through to the mid-1990s. Early in his career, he worked as an assistant director under guys like Mikiro Narose and Ishiro Honda, and of the 40 or so films that Okamoto directed himself, he wrote over half of the scripts for those films. So this is a director who was very hands-on in the pre-production process, and I think that benefited some of his better works. Okamoto is actually one of my favorite Japanese directors, because he was really talented at blending effective drama with genre elements to create films that were memorable in just how purely entertaining they turned out to be. This guy has directed some serious crowd-pleasers. So let's get to the list. My thoughts on each film will be very brief, primarily because this is a list video, not a review. And remember, titles for all the movies I discuss will be listed in the description box below. I'm not providing availability information in this playlist because most of these films I saw years ago and availability has changed over time. My usual method for checking availability is Google, so be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. So let's roll. Top 10, let's do it. Number 10, Red Lion from 1969. This is a drama, comedy, action flick. Impersonating an Imperial Army officer by wearing a red lion's mane, a poor servant, played by fan favorite Toshiro Mifune, returns to his village after 10 years of absence to end the village's suffering caused by corrupt officials and businessmen. Mifune's character is more of a clumsy, everyday man than a badass samurai that most viewers might uh, expect from him, given his more popular roles, but he's endearing and likable in a quirky kind of way. If you thought Mifune was great in Akira Kurosawa's films, just wait until you see him in an Okamoto flick. The script is well wit written, focusing on the theme of freedom, as well as other topics, and the sword fights are good. Number 9, The Battle of Okinawa, 1971. This is a war action flick. This film captures the events of World War II's Battle of Okinawa, a massive amphibious assault by U.S. troops. This film is a ton of battle strategy and a lot of fighting and violence, which includes a scene involving a grenade that's pretty crazy. There's quite a bit of narration in it as well, which is presented in a documentary style. Some online reviewers have pointed out some historical inaccuracies, but it is still interesting to see this kind of film through a Japanese viewpoint. There are a few conflicts presented between the Okinawan forces and their mainland leaders as well. The sense of desperation is shown when they continue to lose forces in a no-win situation. Number 8. Desperado Outpost, 1959. This is a war drama action flick. Set during World War II, a man poses as a war correspondent and investigates his brother's death while venturing to an outpost. This is a quality drama mystery that stars Makoto Sato, an actor that I am especially fond of, and it seems that Okamoto was fond of him as well because he would appear in many of this director's other films. Desperado Outpost is considered to be one of this director's first signature films that blends drama with commercial action elements. One bad guy gets a pretty cool death scene near the end, and the finale is pretty entertaining. Number 7, Warring Clans, 1963. This is a drama action flick. Conflict arises between clans when an opportunistic man attempts to smuggle guns. A lone, masterless warrior with some new friends helped ship 300 rifles to a Japanese warlord during the Sengoku period, which sparks a conflict. Now, like Okamoto's other earlier films, the characters have a good sense of humor and are very likable. Makoto Sato appears yet again here and is quite fun to watch. Number 6, The Last Gunfight, Japanese crime action drama film from 1960. After being suspected of corruption, demoted and sent to the city of Kojin, a police detective, played by Toshiro Mifune, shakes up the criminal underworld. It would seem that Okamoto had a small batch of favorite supporting actors during the early years, and they appear yet again in this film. Mifune kicks some serious butt at times, and he's quite fun to watch here. There are a few flaws here and there to this film, but this is an enjoyable gangster flick through and through. Number 5, Kill, 1968. This is an action comedy. So a retired samurai and a strong farmer become embroiled in a conflict when a group of rebels kill a wicked clan leader. 
Now this is a brisk, lightly hearted film with good sword fights and some really funny moments. It almost feels like a comedic homage to Yojimbo at times. The story is engaging because the two leads decide to help one side by deceiving the other, and the actors give fine performances, which is no surprise given the fact that Tatsuya Nakadai is the lead. Number 4, The Human Bullet, 1968. This is a war drama comedy. Now while awaiting his target, a kamikaze torpedo soldier remembers his interactions with his fellow Japanese while training for his mission. Now, this film is basically a companion piece to Japan's Longest Day, which we will cover in a minute, with both taking place soon after the dropping of the atomic bombs. Now, this film acts as a satire about the absurdity of Japan's position during the final days of the war. It's a mix of serious and humorous moments that work really well. The lengthy sequence of finding his first love is actually quite fun, but this also has some good dramatic elements to it as well. Now, my top three films from this director are essentially interchangeable. They really are, but I did my best to order them, so bear with me. So here we go. Number three, Sword of Doom, 1966. This is an action drama. Now, after killing a man in a competition, a sociopathic swordsman is pursued by the man's brother. Our lead actor here is Tatsuya Nakadai, who is at the top of his game in this. This could be my personal favorite performance of this guy's entire career. He's that good. In addition, the psychology of his character is nicely explored and features an intriguing sequence involving shadows. The relationship between a samurai and his sword is also touched upon. In terms of action, the sword fights are really good in this. The choreography is old school and some would say rather simplistic, but it's realistic and very nicely captured by Okamoto's camera work. There are some wide shots and long-lasting single takes with no edits, which is seriously impressive. I would say that there are two highlight action scenes in this that you should look forward to, one of which takes place in a snowstorm, and you cannot miss it when it happens, and the other is the big finale, which is extremely satisfying. Sword of Doom is a must-see. Number two, Japan's Longest Day, 1967. This is a war drama thriller. Now, following the detonation of the atomic bombs during World War II, the Japanese military and government clash over the demand from the Allies for unconditional surrender. Now, this film is more interesting than you might expect. The ideological machine of the Japanese military was so fanatically one-minded that the attempt to ramp it down was met with considerable resistance, even by its own government. Much of the film focuses on the drafting of the announcement of the surrender to the Japanese citizens, as well as the military's attempt to secure power and intercept the communication. There's a lot of recognizable actors in this as well. Toshiro Mifune, Chishu Ryu, and Makoto Sato, of course, etc. There's more guys here. This is great stuff. Must see. And my personal favorite Okamoto film. Again, this is very close competition between these top three, but I don't know. I might have to go with Fort Graveyard from 1965. This is a war action drama flick. Charged with insubordination for punching a superior, a sergeant, played by Toshiro Mifune, again, is assigned a small group of military band members in order to take control of an enemy fort of 50 men during World War II. Okamoto provides a very entertaining film with likable characters and a tone that's just all over the place. Now, there's some really funny moments and even some songs. Then, grave danger and violence, but it oddly makes the film more interesting than a typical war drama. In terms of action, there are a few long, exciting battle scenes where Mifune and Makoto Sato, of course, kick some serious butt together and lead their men. This is good stuff. There's also one excellent little sabotage tactic in this excellent crowd pleaser. So those are my personal favorite Kihachi Okamoto films. This guy was a fantastic director. Love him. Uh, he needs more exposure to Western viewers, so I hope this list can provide some recommendations to those of you who may not be familiar with him. And if you've seen some of his films already, tell me your favorites in the comments section below. And as always, I'll see you next time.